friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and you are in my kitchen here in Wyoming. And on our homestead, we love to do a lot of cooking, gardening, and we have some fun animals, including goats, chickens, kittens, and some pigs on their way. So today we are actually going to be doing something kind of fun. First thing we're gonna be doing is making more cookies to fill our freezer with. Today we're gonna be making chocolate chip peanut butter and oatmeal chocolate chip. Oatmeal chocolate chip is Sam's favorite cookies, so we're gonna get that made for him and give him a little treat. And then, my whole goal for right now is to just do as much prepping while the weather's still not incredible, so that I can make sure that this summer we have time to spend outside and we're not in the kitchen, but we're still eating well and we're eating at home and eating the food that we produce. So, one thing that I like to do is I just look at the grocery store ads and sometimes it gives me ideas of foods that we could pre-make a lot of like the frozen sections anything that's in the frozen section you can make yourself and freeze so i was perusing the sales ad just trying to get some inspiration and i saw jiff cornbread mix and it was on sale for like 50 cents a box i was like i love jiff cornbread mix but I was trying to think like, what do I love about it? And I think it's the convenience. That <laughs> it's so quick and so simple and it's just sitting on the pantry shelf. So I kind of got me thinking and one thing that we love to bring to people's houses and we love to just make during the week is banana bread. And I always have bananas in the freezer. We always have eggs and butter. So I was thinking, what could I do that we would enjoy that would be something similar? And I decided I'm gonna make kind of a pre-made banana bread mix. We'll do some gluten-free for the family members that are gluten-free and some not. And that way I can quickly just dump all the ingredients out, add in the wet ingredients, mix it up quickly, and we have a banana bread. And it's super simple. So we're going to go ahead and make banana breads to go or like quick and easy pantry ready to go banana bread and then also get some more of our cookies made. One other thing that I wanted to mention is I know not a lot of people like baking in the summer. And we actually use our Traeger to do a lot of baking. So if you have a Traeger or something where you can like actually set the temperature, the Traeger works just like a convection, convection oven. So we will go ahead and just put the pan on the Traeger, set it to the appropriate temperature, and you can cook banana bread, you can cook muffins, uh, chocolate chip cookies. It won't really have that smoke flavor, maybe a tiny, tiny bit, but really because you're putting it in so hot and it's working more as a convection oven, you're not gonna really get much of that smoke flavor. So it works really awesome. We love to bake like that in the summer just because we don't have air conditioning and so we try to keep our house kind of cool during the day. So we find that baking on the Traeger is another thing that makes that really possible and not a lot of people know about that. So, all right, that's enough chit chatting from me. Let's go ahead and get these cookies and our baking mixes all put together. So to start this off, I'm gonna get a half a cup of butter. So one stick. And you want your butter to be room temperature. So I've just had this sitting out all day while I was working. And now I'm just going to put that in our KitchenAid. If you wanted your butter to soften quicker, you can just go ahead and stick it in the oven and put the light on. Or I know some microwaves, I just found this out, have the soften button. So you can use that as well. So I have half a stick of butter and a third of a cup of white sugar. And I'm also going to add in two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. And remember when you're measuring your brown sugar, always pack it. We're gonna go ahead and put this down and just cream this for a couple of minutes. Right, that's looking great. So then to this, I'm gonna add in one egg from our chickens. And I just like to pre-crack it just because it's a chicken egg. You just, I like to check it before I put it in and ruin all of that. Well, the last of this vanilla, I'm gonna need to refill that. And then finally, a half a teaspoon of salt and I'm not normally a measurer but like I always say when I'm baking I will definitely measure all right now we're going to put this back on this time low and let that just mix all together all right that's mixed for about a minute so now what I'm gonna do scoop this 
tips over a little bit. One cup of flour. And if you were really doing this right, you would mix all your dry ingredients together and then put them in, but we're, we're not doing that today. And then a half a teaspoon of baking soda. If you have clumps in your baking soda, you're gonna wanna take care of that, but mine is nice, nice and smooth. All right, now let's put that down and see that's why I didn't want to mix them in a separate bowl. I figured it's just flour and baking soda, so all good. And then we're just going to give this another mix. All right, that's looking perfect. Now I'm gonna add in one and a half cups of oats, whatever kind of oats you have. All right, mix that in again. And the reason that I did my oatmeal cookies first is because it's basically the same batter as the peanut butter, just the peanut butter has peanut butter in it. So I knew that if I went with the blander of the two first, I wouldn't have to wash everything as well between. I'll still give it a nice rinse, but I don't have to be quite as thorough. So here's my batter, or my dough, I guess. It's looking good. So now I'm just gonna put however many chocolate chips you want in. It is a cookie. Let's go with that much. Maybe uh, three fourths of a cup. And then you can just fold that into the batter. You want to do this with a spatula versus the cooking or the KitchenAid paddle because it will break up your chocolate chips. If you don't mind that, then go ahead and just let the KitchenAid mix in your chocolate chips. But if you want like a whole chocolate chip, you'll want to do this portion by hand. All right, that looks perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a bowl and we're gonna stick this in the fridge just to let it harden for like 10 minutes while we make our peanut butter dough. Okay, for our peanut butter cookie, we're gonna start it very similarly. So in this, I'm gonna put in, this time, two sticks of butter. And what I love about cookies and things like this is you can double, triple the batch, whatever works best for your family. Sam and I are nine times out of 10 the only two eating these because we live so far out of town. We don't really have visitors very often. So, I mean, obviously when we do, we can definitely crack these out, but more often than not, we're just eating these as like a dessert after dinner. Um, so we like to just make one batch of two different flavors and then by the time we get done with those flavors or whatever cookies we've put together in the freezer, we are kind of tired of that flavor and then we get to move on to the next. So if you have more people in your family, definitely feel free to double or triple these recipes. I just do what works best for our family since there's only two of us. So now I'm going to put in two thirds cup of white sugar. Three fourths cups of brown sugar. Again, always pack your brown sugar when you're measuring it. Ooh, I got some of that, ugh, um, it's not smoke, but whatever from the sugar. That was some sweet tasting air. All right, we're going to do the same thing. Just cream this until it's light and fluffy. All right, you can see how fluffy this is looking on the paddle, but here's how we're looking this batter. So next I'm going to just scrape down the sides and then give this a good scrape just to get that all off, make sure everything gets mixed in well from here on out. Then we're gonna add in two chicken eggs, half a teaspoon of salt, and then one cup of peanut butter. I'm not gonna measure this, I'm just gonna eyeball it. For baking, I find like a really creamy peanut butter like Jif kind of works the best, but you're welcome to use natural peanut butter, almond butter, whatever your heart desires. I'm just a real sucker for, I think it's in my DNA. My, my dad and grandma are the same way. I'm a real sucker for peanut butter. 
especially when it's mixed with chocolate. A much faster way to do this would have been to put this on a spatula, but I don't think my brain was on, so here we are. Okay, that looks good. And then we're just going to turn this on low and let that mix. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell this. It's chocolate, no, peanut butter, butter, and sugar. Like what, ugh, yum, it smells so good. All right, we're just gonna scrape that down a little bit. We're gonna add in 3 fourths teaspoon of baking soda. There's a fourth. And then two and a fourth cups of white flour. level. Perfect. Now let's put this back down and give it another mix. And again, I'm just going to eyeball my chocolate chips, probably about a cup or so. And then we'll just give that a quick mix. All right, that looks perfect to me. Into the refrigerator, this is gonna go for like 10 minutes. All right, next I'm gonna get going while that cools down on our banana bread tins. So first thing I'm gonna do is just write kind of the instructions for this on there. So when it comes to baking, we need them to add a half cup soft butter, three bananas, Every time I spell bananas, I think of Gwen Stefani. Let me know if you <laughs> sing that song in your head too. Two eggs, half teaspoon vanilla, and then I'm just gonna write banana bread. And then we'll cook it at 350 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. All right, so there's what my lid looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the tops labeled the same way. And these are just tops that I have used in the past but can't can with against. So it works out perfectly to write this much on them because they've already been used once. All right, that's done. Now let's get our dry ingredients assembled. So I'm just gonna lay them out like this and we're just gonna run through everything. So in the bottom, I'm gonna start with two cups of flour. And actually, I'm gonna start with the gluten-free one first. So I did just get a new cup out. And this is just gluten-free flour. Wow, I'm making a mess. So then I don't wanna like cross-contaminate, so I'm just gonna finish this one and then we'll do the other two, just since this one's kind of already got everything clean and we're not mixing gluten with gluten-free. So we're gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of baking soda. One cup of flour. And no one in our family is celiac. They just have gluten intolerances. So if they were celiac, I would be very careful. But since it's just an intolerance, it's okay. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon or a little more, and then fill it up with some chocolate chips. And then I am gonna write GF on this lid. Just so I know, and then we'll put the lid on this one and call it a day. There's our baking mixes. If you were gonna put this in a KitchenAid to mix everything up, know your chocolate chips will probably get crunched up, but that's fine with me. All right, I'm gonna repeat the process for the rest of the other two containers. All right, so we're just getting these all scooped up. And these are the oatmeal chalk chip cookies we're starting with. And actually, I'm having a change of plans. Those were kind of hard, a little too hard. I think I let them sit 
in the fridge for too long. So I'm gonna let these come up to room temperature a little bit more and in the meantime, get going on our peanut butter chalk chip. That's much, much easier. It was gonna be a bit of a workout to get those oatmeal cookies going. So this'll be better. And then I'll just have to wash this off between the two so our oatmeal cookies don't taste like peanut butter. But that's no problem. So all I'm going to do is just get these all laid out on the pan and then we're just going to flash freeze them, meaning I'm going to stick them in the freezer just like this on this cookie sheet. You don't need to cover them or anything. You'll let them sit in the freezer for like an hour or so until they become frozen. And then at that point, you can go ahead and grab a container or a plastic bag and put them all inside that bag together. And because they're already frozen, they won't clump together. So I find that works really well with cookies. It also works really well if you're trying to freeze like blueberries or something, you can flash freeze them. And then you have individual frozen fruit versus like a block of frozen fruit. So I do it for a lot of things, but cookies is definitely one of them. And then when we go to bake these, I bake them straight from frozen, put them on a cookie sheet, and then I'll probably go at 325 for, I don't know, however long they need. Sometimes it goes really fast, it feels. Sometimes it feels like it takes forever. So just watch them. Don't worry, these are remaining in a ball. I just need more room. So yeah, just watch them, but I just make the oven a little bit cooler than what like the recommended temperature is. So for these, I would normally bake them at 350, but because they're frozen and I like a soft and gooey cookie, I'm going to go at 325. All right, move that over to the side and then we'll get our oatmeal cookies finished. I did go ahead and wash this. And because these are being flash frozen, they can be really close together. A word to the wise, if you look at my pan, I got this when I was in college and I didn't know you couldn't um, put those in the dishwasher. So if you have this type of pan and you're new to cooking, there's my tip of the day. Don't put, don't put these pans in the dishwasher. All right, you guys, that was a super productive day between all of our cookies and also our mixes. We got a ton accomplished. Like I mentioned, I'm just going to go ahead and stick those pans in the freezer. And then once everything's frozen, I'll pull them off and just stick them in a bag. Cook those at 325 degrees for like 10 to 12 minutes. Just kind of keep an eye on it. When it looks like it's about done, pull it out, slam it on the counter. It'll help flatten the cookie and then pull it off in like a minute or two. So that is it for today's video. I'm really looking forward to this because I think it's gonna help kind of keep my summer going, get a lot of things in the fridge or on the pantry shelf before the busy season starts, which I'm super excited about. That's really been my motivation these past few weeks is to make my life as easy as possible come gardening season because I know things just get crazy. In the summer, I wanna be outside. I don't wanna be in the kitchen. So I'm just kind of trying to do all that upfront work now. If there's anything you guys like to do upfront before this busy season, definitely let me know down below. I think we can all help one another and I love hearing from you guys. If you liked today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing so you don't miss any more videos of us on our home homestead, cooking, adventures, the animals, the garden, all sorts of exciting things are on their way this gardening in this summer. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come hang out with me and I will catch you in the next one. Bye friend. Mm -hmm.